In this video, I will discuss Kirchhoff's laws. There are two laws given by Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff's first law is known as Kirchhoff's current law that is KCL and second law is known as Kirchhoff's voltage law that is KVL. Now starting with KCL it is based on conservation of charge. This law states that the algebraic sum of currents at a junction is zero. For that we need to understand that what is junction. Junction is interconnection of three or more circuit elements. So let's say we have six resistances connected at one place. These are the directions of current through different resistances. So out of these six currents, three are entering this junction and three are leaving the junctions. The currents which are entering the junction, they are known as incoming currents and those who are leaving the junction, they are known as outgoing currents. And as per the statement of Kirchhoff's current law, algebraic sum of uh, all the currents at a junction is zero. So we can take either of them as positive and the other one as negative. Means if I am taking outgoing current as positive, then incoming should be taken as negative or if I take incoming is as positive then I have to take outgoing as negative but usually the convention is that outgoing currents they are considered as positive so I1 is positive I2 negative I3 positive I4 positive minus I5 minus I6 equal to 0 or we can write I1 plus I3 plus I4 is equal to I2 plus I5 plus I6. So another way to state Kirchhoff's current law is that sum of incoming currents is equal to sum of outgoing currents. Now we know that the junction is the interconnection of three or more circuit elements. Similarly, we can have node. Node is interconnection of two or more circuit elements. But if we have just two elements connected, like you know, I am having just two resistances connected. So it's a simple series connection. There is no point to find out uh, to apply KCL at this node. So it's always desired that we apply the KCL at junction. And based on this Kirchhoff's law, we will discuss one method for analysis of circuits. That is 
node analysis that i will discuss in, in the coming videos now kirchhoff's second law is kirchhoff's voltage law which is based on conservation of energy this law states that algebraic sum of voltages inside a closed loop is zero or the sum of voltage drops is equal to sum of voltage rises now for this let's consider that we have a loop in which we have one voltage source v1 resistance r1 second resistance r2 then voltage source v2 another resistance r3 if we consider that the current in this loop is i which is flowing in this direction i have already marked the direction of current we know that the current flows from higher potential to lower potential so when it will pass through resistance r1 this will be the polarity of voltage drop across resistance r1 this is the polarity of voltage across resistance r2 and for r3 this terminal is positive and this one is negative since current is flowing in this direction now according to this law algebraic sum of all these voltages whether they are voltage drop or they are voltage rise it's zero so what we need to understand what we mean by voltage drop i'm considering a resistance this is a polarity of voltage according to the direction of current so if we move in this direction we are moving from positive terminal to negative terminal means from higher potential to lower potential so it is voltage drop this can happen in case of voltage source as well if we have a voltage source which is connected like this and we are moving in this direction again this one is voltage drop as we are moving from high potential to lower potential similarly we have voltage rise now voltage rise this is the polarity of voltage and we are moving in this direction means we are moving from negative to positive terminal higher lower to higher potential so this is voltage rise say so voltage source is connected like this we are moving in this direction this is voltage rise so now coming back to this closed path algebraic sum of voltages in a loop is zero so what i will do i will consider voltage drop as positive voltage rise as negative or what i mean to say if i am moving in this direction in the loop i will write the voltage according to the sign which is coming first like for this v1 negative sign is coming first so i will write this one as minus v1 then we have drop across the resistance r1 it will be equal to i into r1 since 
the first sign which came in our path that is positive so plus i1 i into r1 similarly again we are having positive sign i r2 same over here plus v2 similarly this one plus i r3 equal to 0 so this is the statement of Kirchhoff's voltage law that algebraic sum of voltages in a loop is zero. So you can take either the voltage drop as positive or voltage rise as positive. So depending upon whether you have considered voltage drop as positive or negative, you have to consider the opposite polarity for the voltage rise. Now based on this KC, uh, KVL, we will have second method for analysis which is known as mesh analysis. So we will be discussing it in the next video. But before discussion of nodal analysis or mesh analysis, let's consider a numerical example for these laws. For this I am considering a circuit one thirty volt point two ohm point two ohm One hundred ten volts, point five A, B, C, D, E, and F. Our target is that we need to find. the current in each branch using KVL and KCL. We don't know the direction of current so how we solve we actually assign branch currents to each branch so here we have three branches first branch then second and this one is the third branch so we have to assign the current to each branch from here i am assuming that the current is i1 here we have a junction so this current will get divided into two parts. I am considering the current in this branch as I2. Now as per KCL, the sum of incoming currents, that must be equal to outgoing currents. Current in third branch is I3. So as per KCL I2 and I3 they are incoming I1 is outgoing so I2 plus I3 that is equal to I1 or what we get I3 is equal to I1 minus I2 so we can write it as I1 minus I2 in order to eliminate the variables so we will have just two variables now next is we have to apply KVL to each loop. Firstly, I will consider loop A, B, E, F, A. And starting from this, I will move in clockwise direction. Starting from this 
voltage source minus 130 then this will be the polarity of voltage as per the direction of current 0.2 into I1 this is the polarity of voltage according to the direction of I2 plus 0.2 I2 plus 110 equal to 0 so this will give us equation 0.2 into I1 plus I2 is equal to 20 then next is next step is apply KVL2 either loop B, C, D, E, B or we can consider A, B, C, D, E, F, A it's our choice let's consider this outer loop that is A, D, C, D, E, F, A so first is this 130 volt source so minus 130 then drop across 2 ohm resistance a uh, 0.2 ohm resistance 0.2 into i1 then next element is this 0.5 ohm resistance again we know that the current is flowing in this direction so this one is positive terminal this one is negative terminal for voltage drop so and this drop will be plus 0.5 into I1 minus I2 equal to 0. So this will give us the equation 0.7 I1 minus 0.5 I2 equal to 130. This is our first equation. This one is second equation. So when we solve these two equations simultaneously, we get the answer of I1 as 150 ampere and I2 as minus 50 ampere and the third current I3 which is equal to I1 minus I2 that will be equal to 200 MPS. So it means as I2 is coming out as negative it means its actual direction is just opposite to this it is in this direction so in next video we will be starting with the mesh analysis which is application of Kirchhoff's voltage law